it's old Big Bob, Big Big Bob. And it's uh, the next segment here. So um, we were talking earlier about Kavanaugh and all the people in the world. Connie Chung has just come out and said that she was uh, treated in a way that was inappropriate, sexually assaulted as a, from a doctor. And the doctor seemed to have a lot of access and ability to be problems. And they're human beings, you know. Human beings are not perfect. Human beings mess up. So the thing is that in Christ, we move forward. And is that person going to be held accountable and stopped and stymied and the life totally tossed into the into the shredder because of a mistake they made or a, or a ill choice or because of an, uh, an allowance of evil? Is that going to totally... Oh, there's my gas valve. Is that going to totally ruin people? Our Father God who created us, He said no. He said no. Sin, errors, mistakes, bad choices, evil choices. Anything, anything and everything is covered by the blood of Jesus. And wisely, I think the society, our society has put in place statutes of limitations, which they, which they want to throw out now. They want to, let's throw out all statutes of limitations. Let's just, if you messed up as a two-year-old, we're going to make you pay, brother. You're going to pay. The problem is, is that there's never enough payment. There's never enough payment. There's never enough payment. Death penalty for everything. That's really what people want. They want the death penalty for everything. Because people are very much into judgment, into condemnation. That's why people are afraid of God, of course. Because they, they feel as though that's the only answer. The only answer is to make people pay eternally, pay irrevocably, pay, 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 and get all their vengeance out. Take vengeance out on people who are just innocently living their lives. Now, I understand it makes me think of the war crimes guy, you know, the guy that was with Hitler back in the 30s and 40s. And no, we don't want war crimes people to just be running around. But even the war crimes guy, I mean, if he's been living his life quietly and meek and mildly, there was just a, a NCIS episode where a woman was a serial killer. And this woman found the Lord or she... She did something, and she was not no longer killing. Well, a neighbor who was an investigator was about to turn her in, about to uh, about to reveal her secrets. So she went over and she killed him. So obviously, she hadn't gone over, she hadn't gotten past her her murderous rages. That's a different story. If someone is still murdering, still abusing, still violating that's a different story but the idea where the statute of limitations is is that if someone has done something wrong and they got caught or they didn't get caught or whatever if, if they've lived all these years was it too much to ask them to acknowledge it probably not we need to confess it if this person has confessed that they've confessed and confessed and confessed and confessed and they've got a wide circle of people who know what's going on and what what's happened and and they're still not gonna, not gonna, not gonna. That not gonna spirit is just really, really sick. Because these people are bound up. They're wound up like with a bundle of, of baling wire. You know, baling wire is not real thick. But to get enough of it going round, around, 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 
then you're totally captured. You're totally, you're a prisoner to that baling wire. And baling wire is not very strong. Strong enough to hold the hay though. Bible verses about freedom. John eight thirty two. All right, let's see here. Here we go. We'll go with this way. <laughs> All right. Here's Psalm 91. <coughs> Psalm 91, 14 to 15. Because he who holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I'll protect him. Because he knows me, and in my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. Psalm 118 verse five says, out of my distress, I called on the Lord. The Lord answered me and set me free. Psalm 119, 45. I will walk about in freedom, for I have sought out your precepts. <coughs> yes, definitely we want to live in freedom. And the problem is, is that when people do not want to live in freedom, they want to live in bondage, they want to not submit to authority. I've been in so many groups and so many therapists and so many counselors. When I was in Bible college back in 1979, I, I wanted to be a ministry. I love the Lord. I want to be a ministry. I want to be a ministry. I want to be a ministry. I was up in Lake Arrowhead yesterday drove around and it's incredible because of my childhood because of my upbringing because of the the lack of the lacks the abuses the neglects the trauma my own development I was a late bloomer I'm a late bloomer I'm a late bloomer I did not develop my strength, confidence, or ability to handle. That's a cool sign back there. You got this empty field and they said, hard hats required in an empty field. I'm like, you're, you're literally in the middle of nothing. There's not hard hat required. They're getting ready to build there. That's what it is. It's kind of, I'll show you this little thing there. They've got a field like this. And, Look at this, it's just an 
they're going to put in, a, they're going to take this and make it into that. And that's what they're doing out here in Cherry Valley. I'm on Highland View here. It all goes back to one thing. We need Jesus. We need Jesus. We need Jesus. People need the Lord. People need to have Christ in their lives. People need to be able to experience the freedom and the release of anger, release of resentment, release of trauma. We gotta be able to say, you know what, enough is enough. We've dealt with this. And in the case of a woman or a man who's never dealt with their issues, they never dealt with their trauma. They never talked about it. Well, obviously, yeah, you want to process through, but I don't ever call my dad up and say, Daddy, you got to pay, brother. You got to pay, Daddy. Daddy, you got to pay. I mean, my dad, he's not my dad anymore as far as, you know, I'm not a little boy. He's still my father, but he's not my daddy. He's not, he's not raising me. He doesn't tell me what to do. He doesn't have any authority over my life. My Father God has my has the authority, and so I can recognize uh, points of, of neglect and points of of need. <clears throat> Isaiah says, "The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the afflicted." That's the deal. Good news to the afflicted. 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 We have good news. You don't have to live in bondage. You don't have to live in fear. You don't have to live in torment. You don't have to live recalling and re rehearsing that memory over and over and over and over. You don't have to try to hide the memory. You don't have to keep it under a bushel. Oh, I better not tell anybody. No, tell anybody you want. But also tell them Jesus has delivered me. I used to be like this, but now I'm like that. I had this problem, but now I don't have this problem anymore. So we can be free, free, free. And when you see me in front of the church and I'm weeping and sobbing and crying and I am rejoicing in him, you can say, you know what, that Bob, he's been through a lot, but he's let it go, he's let it go, he's let it go, he let it go, he let it go, he let it go. Bobby's not hanging on to the sins of his fathers and his aunts and uncles. Bobby's not hanging on to his own sin. His own mistake. I made. I've made. I've made a couple of really grievous mistakes, and uh, I've made other mistakes that are just stupid. I, I did not speak up for myself. I didn't have a conversation. I just sat back and, you know, with big wide eyes as an adult, I just said, "Okay, okay, okay." And I, I just let people write a narrative about my life that was not true. So, as much truth and as much. Uh, facts as there are in my life there's also narratives that can be written about us that aren't true and we need to speak up and we need to do the right thing Luke 4 18 says for the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor and I think the devil has really uh, slowed me down quite a bit in, in that but I'm trying to give good news to you we have a, a, a place of forgiveness we have a place of, of redemption we have a place of deliverance and we can be delivered from the past if you were abused if you were somehow violated go ahead tell people all about it don't be afraid if you're afraid go ahead and confess I'm scared to death I'm a nervous wreck this is really scary because it's you're like reliving it and there's a lot of there's a lot of realities like uh, our president uninformedly I don't know why he said this but he said well where where you just you just and it, and it is it is in our humanness it is does make sense so, well she can't remember the the place she can't remember the time well then uh, other professionals have said hey you know it's not about remembering the place or the time it's about remembering the trauma itself and getting it off your shoulders and and having somebody come by and give you a hug so all right well God bless you this is Bob Staley Devo I'm Bob Two one three seven one three eight nine five four eight nine five four green att dot net on the Twitter Mr Bob 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 eight nine five four and of course uh, that's it thumbs up talk to you soon God bless you bye.